back everyone, we are wrapping up week 4. We are taking a look at one of the optional assignments for this week. We are looking at recover today. I will go back and do the alternate one in a different video. So let's get into recover here because they don't give us a lot to go on but they do give us a lot of notes and a lot of these notes are going to be important. So the lecture is only one part of this. The next part is really reading these notes, going over them and making sure you have a decent understanding of them because the code's a bit lengthy. So make sure you go over your notes. There's some important stuff in here. This is going to be one of the important things right here. Card raw is going to be an important one. Make sure you've obviously done everything you need to do. There's also another important one right here. There's this here and there's this here. We're actually going to be using all of those. So make sure you've gone over all of the information that's here so that you have a better understanding of what we'll be doing. Now, I didn't actually do my code the way that I'm teaching you because there's more than one way to do this. Mine was a little shorter, but I'm going to use the notes that they have so that following along is a little bit easier. So I'll be using the information that they provide. I'm going to use the declared variables that they have in here. So things like argvr, I'm going to call it file. In my original code, I didn't actually call mine file. I defined mine a bit differently because something that I told you, when you're declaring an item here, like they call it file, or down here they call it raw file, I didn't actually like those. I called mine in file and out file and things like that because as the code read down, to me it seemed to make a little bit more sense. But we're actually going to be following along with this. So let's get into the code, see what they've provided with us, and then see what we need to do to get it started. As usual, I've started mine with a number of notes, and you can see that we kind of need a lot of things here. So let's talk about what this program is going to do. We need a program to recover the JPEG images from a forensic image file. We have to read through the forensic image file block by block, and we have to look at the start of a JPEG image, and particularly the fourth block, to see if we have found a JPEG image. If we haven't found one, we'll keep moving through it. So I'm going to start this code by something that's actually here in the notes. The block size is going to be 512, so that's something that we're going to define here because we have a header that we want to define as a, a variable, and we want to make sure we continue using block size of 512. So that's going to be the first thing we do. So we're going to define, and we want to call it block size, all capitals. Five twelve, and just put a low. This is from notes. Now we're going to get into our main function here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to check for the correct usage. So we can see that in the main we are defining two variables here. We have argc, which is the number of command line arguments that we're going to be passing to the program. And we have argv, that's the array of strings that's going to contain the command line arguments. So we need to make sure that we're using two arguments going forward. So first we're going to put in here, so let's do an if loop for this one. So if argc is not equal to, so exclamation point equal to, well then what happens? We need to print out the error message that would basically let us know that we haven't completed what it needs us to do. So let's open our if loop here and we're going to get this back up here because I want to keep my notes in place. So let's print that error message. We're just going to do a printf here and we're going to say something like usage dot slash recover image backslash n and close that out and per the notes when we had an error it wanted us to return one so we're going to return one and let's close our if loop there next we're going to open the forensic image file specified in the command line arguments so let's see what that looks like here so we're going to start with some variables. Now these I had I had originally defined differently, but they define them pretty specifically in the notes, so I'm going to stick with them. We're just going to call the file argv1 file of raw file, which is also from the notes, equals open file, comma, r and close that and that's directly from your notes down here right on this one here so we're just using what they told us to use here so let's get our if loop open so if raw file is equal to null then we need our printf here we're going to keep our notes in place print 
print f and we'll say could not open and we're going to use our percent s here that will return what they couldn't open from what we put into the terminal and we'll say file so if you put something into the terminal it will return could not open and it'll read from that string what it couldn't open file and again the notes wanted us to return a value of one if that was the case and we will close out this if loop next we need to get started with some variables so there's a lot of things that we have to declare here and we're actually going to use a boolean value because a boolean value can be either true or false which is really helpful in this code so because we're going to use boolean value we need a new library now remember this is to return the true or false because we want something to be exactly one thing true or exactly another thing false so I'm gonna do this in a boolean value but before I do that I wanna go ahead and include the library for it so let's get our library that allows us to use booleans in here so we're gonna do include and it's gonna be std bool dot h and now we can use boolean values so let's initialize some of those variables here the first one's gonna be a boolean value and it's just gonna be I'm going to call it found jpeg so as though we found a file right and it's going to equal false and that is going to be our flag to keep track of whether a JPEG has been found the next thing we're going to do is you can see by that note is going to be our counter for the number of JPEGs found so we need a counter here let's do JPEG count makes sense right we'll start that counter at zero and that will be our counter for the number of JPEGs found. Now we need this buffer to store a block of data from the forensic image and this comes from the notes. So if you want to take a look back real quick it's going to be this one right here the UINT8 underscore T. We're going to use that right here so UINT8 underscore T buffer and then block size and that's all going to be capitals underscore size close that out and that's going to be our buffer to store a block of data from the forensic image now we need some sort of array to store the file name of the current JPEG so let's build ourselves an array so let's call this one JPEG name right we want to use things that make sense so eight and we need a pointer that's going to be pointing to the current JPEG so file now they didn't tell you what to name this one again I was originally using in file out file things like that so I did keep this one we're just gonna do out pointer equal null and leave that note right where it's at so now we have our program that's initializing these variables right we have found JPEG which is gonna be our boolean true or false we have our counter to keep track of how many JPEG images we found we found our buffer which is the array of 512 bytes that stores a block of data from the forensic image and we have JPEG name which is the array of characters that stores the file name of the current image and output pointer which is our pointer that's pointing to the current image file so we're gonna need all those things going forward so let's keep moving on here and before we move on let's go ahead and get this in here so it doesn't become a problem later on close that out and now we need to read the forensic image file block by block so what does that look like that one's actually gonna be quite simple because they tell us what it looks like keep in mind you can read data using fread per the manual and this is what it's gonna look like so we're gonna be doing a while loop here so let's get into that and actually before we move on since we used uint8 underscore t we do need another library so let's make sure we put the appropriate library in there so that we can actually use this function so let's include int.h and now we can use that function all right so going back down read the forensic image file block by block let's get our while loop started so from the notes while read buffer block size one and then raw file so as it's going through these block by block equals one what are we going to do we are going to per the note here check if the block marks the start of a new jpeg so if i'm going to write this one out first i'm going to show you where it's at in the notes so if the buffer of zero 
equals, now this is specific, right? 0x ff and buffer 1 equals 0x d8 and buffer 2 equal equal again 0x ff and buffer 3 and 0x f0 equal equal 0x e0 so that's what that's going to look like now where does all this come from that's right here in our notes so in the notes you see that jpegs have signatures right the first three bytes are 0x ff 0x d8 0x ff from the first to the third byte left to right the fourth byte meanwhile is either 0x e0 and then goes through all of these so put in another way the fourth bytes four bits are one 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 zero and it's telling us that if we have this pattern it's most likely a JPEG not guaranteed but most likely so we've used those except let's update this it's not OC it's 0 X FF then we have 0 X D8 so there's a mistake on this one here and 0 X FF then 0x f0, 0x e0. And you can see what we did with our fourth buffer here, which is actually third, because we start counting from zero. We just did the 0x f0 through the 0x e0. So the first three were defined as they indicated, and then we have the 0x e0 through the 0x e f. So that's what the code is reflecting here. Our first buffer is zero, second buffer one, third buffer two, and fourth buffer a range between zero x f zero and zero x e zero. That comes from the notes that's directly there, so that's how we're gonna code it. Now we need to close the previous JPEG file if one was open, and we're just gonna do that automatically, so we're gonna make the program do that for us. So let's open this if loop here, and get this note in the right place. So now we're going to use one of our variables. We're going to use our found JPEG, which remember can only be true or false since we declared it as, as a Boolean, which is nice. So if we found it, we're going to close it. And we used the file uh, out pointer, right? So once that file is closed, if we have found a JPEG, so else, let's say we found one. So found jpg equals true. And now we're going back to the outer if block here. So if we found a JPEG, let's move back here. We're going to open our new JPEG file. So let's get that done. So as usual, we're going to type it out first, but this is actually in the notes as well. So sprintf JPEG name. And you're going to use something you probably haven't seen here before. We've used something similar, but not quite this. So we're going to do percent. 03d dot jpg end quote and then jpeg count and what that's doing is it's generating the file name for a new jpeg based on the jpeg count variable now the percent 3d jpeg we've used percent d before you guys remember what that does but the percent 3 is actually going to accomplish this request here in the notes where it wants three decimal points so instead of using just percent d from the string it's going to give it a 001 a 002 a 003 etc etc because we're asking it to format the three spots that we need and that's going to accomplish exactly what it's looking for so scrolling down give us some space here just like it says we're going to open a new jpeg image file with the generated file name so we are going to use our output pointer because that's telling us where we're at so open JPEG name and quote W and quote semicolon and let's put our note right there and just in case you guys are curious in case you didn't know we use the R for reading and we use the W for writing so that's why it's quote W there to help write the new file name so now we need something to check if the pointer is null which means that there was an error in the output file for writing and if it is null the program needs to print an error message so let's get into what that'll look like so if the pointer is equal to null then what do we need to do let's open our if file we need to close 
the raw file, which is a variable we declared, and print our error message. So let's move this out of here and into here. We're going to print F and we'll say could not create and we're going to use our percent %s right for the string input backslash n for a new line and jpeg name and we'll close that out and we'll just put our note right in there and we're going to return 3 now technically speaking the return up here should have been 2 in my opinion but I'm fairly certain that the notes told you to return 1 it should have been 2 because we already returned 1 if we return one twice, we may not know what the error is in the program, but because I'm fairly certain the notes told me to return one, I'm just going to do it the way they told me. However, they didn't indicate it on this one, so I'm going to return three knowing that it's the third function in the code that's causing an issue. So that's how we're going to leave. And then getting out of this one, we now need to increment the counter for each JPEG that we found. So let's increase the counter. So JPEG counter as we declared it plus plus and that notes gonna go right there and let's close this outer loop here and move on to our next note let's give ourselves a little bit of space here write the current block to the current file if one is open let's move this up one so if found JPEG and we're going to use our write function buffer block size one and the pointer and we'll close that out and we'll close that out it looks like my spacing's a little off so I'm just gonna get in here and move some of these things out and then let's move these out There we go, that looks better. So now we need to close the forensic image file and the last JPEG file if one was open. So we're just gonna do F close raw file as they told us to name it. And if found JPEG, we're going to close pointer close that that's already closed and we need to exit the program so let's just move that there and we're gonna return zero and that should do it so let's go ahead and make recover it's a line 53 that should have all been capitalized so let me just switch this to null and make recover Perfect, recover makes. Let's go ahead and run a style check real quick. And guys, I want to point something out real quick. Sometimes, for whatever reason, when you run style, it's recommending a new line be put right here and then it be tabbed all the way out. That's absolutely wrong. So the style is accurate. Sometimes you just need to run update 50 or whatever the case is. So all of that looks good. Let's go ahead and see if this thing makes. So we'll run our check real quick. And there you have it, guys. Everything looks green. Everything looks good. This is CS50. That was Recover. I am Devin, and as always, you guys are awesome. Congratulations on passing week four. I'll see you guys soon in week five.